you have mitral valve prolapse syndrome, today we're going to talk about the number one nutrient deficiency in this syndrome. The first question is, what is mitral valve prolapse? Well, you have these valves in the heart. They're little doors that open and shut. And if they can close and open correctly, the motor, the pump is very efficient and you feel great. Everything's fine. But with a mitral valve prolapse, they're kind of floppy. They kind of leak. They're kind of large and they can bulge. And this bulging is called prolapse, okay? Prolapse is kind of a displaced tissue from the normal position. So we have the valve in the wrong position. It's just not correct. And from that, you get a lot of inefficiency of this heart pumping action. And this creates various symptoms like weakness, fatigue, palpitations, anxiety, shortness of breath. And if you look this condition up, a lot of times you'll see a word connected to it called idiopathic. That basically means we don't know what causes it. And this condition is usually treated with either beta blockers or a calcium channel blocker. Now, there's a very interesting uh, research paper on this. And so I'm going to show you what I found. I'm going to put those down in the description. But from the American Journal of Cardiology, okay, there was a double-blind study done. And the title of this uh, paper was Clinical Symptoms of Mitral Valve Prolapse Are Related to hypomagnesemia. See, now you can use that at a party to sound really, really smart. You can ask your friends, have you ever been checked for hypomagnesemia? Just don't mention my name when you ask them that. Basically, that means you have low magnesium in your blood and attenuated, that means lessened, by magnesium supplements. They had 141 subjects and they compared it to 40 people who did not have this condition. And the first thing they did is they tested both groups for a magnesium deficiency. And they found in the group with mitral valve prolapse, there was a 60% deficiency of magnesium. Now in the healthy group, there were only 5% of these people had a magnesium deficiency. And the results were this. There was a significant decrease in anxiety, weakness, shortness of breath, and palpitations. And there was also a significant decrease in adrenaline. I don't know if you know this, but when you have low magnesium, adrenaline tends to go high. Now check this out. This is interesting. A magnesium deficiency accelerates the aging of the fibroblast cell. It's basically the cell that helps you make collagen, elastin, and hyaluronic acid. Now, all three of these things are like really important as we age for our skin, for our ligaments, for our tendons, for our valves. Well, apparently this is kind of one theory of why we develop this mitral valve prolapse because of the magnesium deficiency and the fibroblasts, the formation of those little collagen elastic valves. Now, if you actually watched my other video on magnesium, the one where I talk about the first symptom of a magnesium deficiency is tetany, like twitching, like that, maybe underneath the left eye, could be anywhere in the body. If we just take a look at tetany in relationship to the heart, this tetany is the heart's equivalent to this mitral valve prolapse and its associated symptoms like arrhythmias, because tetany is a problem with the muscle nerve connection. Well, if you have that in the heart, you can have an arrhythmia. And check this out, 85% of people with mitral valve prolapse have tetany in other places in the body. And if we come back to the medications that are used, what does a beta blocker do? It blocks adrenaline, the very thing that's increased with a magnesium deficiency. When you take magnesium, you don't want to just rely on the RDAs because you're usually already deficient and it takes many years to become deficient. And so if you take a look at like a lifelong deficiency of magnesium, just by going to the regular RDAs, you're probably not going to fix that problem. Magnesium is tightly regulated. And so when you take magnesium, it's going to like, it's not just going to spike up overnight. It's going to slowly increase over a period of months and it could take even a year I had someone reach out to me and they said, you know, I, I have arrhythmias and I was taking the magnesium and I didn't really see any change. I took it for a week. I said, did you realize how long it takes to fulfill a chronic lifelong 
magnesium deficiency, it takes quite some time. I would take 400 milligrams twice or even maybe three times a day. And of course, I would work up to it. I would start off with 400 milligrams for several days, then go up to 800 milligrams. I would take one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and then take that for maybe a few weeks, and then maybe even add a little bit more. I would also, and this is important, make sure you have enough vitamin D. Magnesium won't work without vitamin D. Very, very important. And as a minimum amount, I would take 10,000 IUs of vitamin D3. And of course, I would make sure I avoid the things that deplete magnesium, sugar, refined carbohydrates, like the breads, the pasta, the cereal, the crackers, the biscuits. If we even take a look at what sugar does to magnesium, if you were to eat sugar right now, let's just say you're eating glucose as one half of the sugar molecule. It would take 24 atoms of magnesium to help process and deal with one molecule of glucose. And then if we get to fructose, to metabolize one molecule of fructose, you need 56 atoms of magnesium. And also if you're cooking and boiling the food, you could kind of you know, wash away a lot of magnesium. I mean, in America, there's like 50% of the population that consumes ultra processed foods. So you know, every single one of those people are severely deficient in magnesium. The main takeaway from this video is this, it takes years for a magnesium deficiency to show up. And it also takes a year for the magnesium to be corrected in the body. And the type of magnesium I would recommend is called magnesium glycinate. Now, there's another very popular video that I did on magnesium that I highly recommend you watch. I'll put it up right here. Check it out.